<laughs> We're waiting for the Ninja Turtle panel. Here's Eric. What's happening? And then here the panel is up here. So she's a little witchy, she's a little magical, she's all badass, Aww. and she's just like a really, really cool character. Aww. Awesome. That's awesome. Well, we figured if you're going to show a new character, we should show a clip of that character, right? Yeah. yeah.
ever since day one, uh, when, you know, since Nickelodeon hired Sierra, I've seen him put his heart and soul, his blood and sweat into the show, and it just Aww. continually shows up on screen, so thank you, brother. I got a lot yeah. of help. Uh, I have a really huge crew, and everybody works super hard every day, so I think a lot of you are here. You should all stand up. There's story artists, sound people, designers, directors are here. The best <laughs> stand up. Yeah. Yeah. I saw him that episode, and uh, he's instrumental in the whole process, too. It's an incredibly disciplined, fantastic group of people. And our wonderful voice director, Andre Romano, who's on here today as well. Yeah, baby. This is a great to be able to watch a third episode with the cast. I know. It's so awesome. So. I'm just saying, it's, it's amazing to be able to watch it with people. I mean, Cyril, you and your crew, it's a big group of people, but you're all, you're, you're creating, you know what's happening. This is, this is new people who like it, and they're coming to see it. So can we just watch it together every week? <laughs> yeah. And there's, a, there's enough theaters in Hollywood. Put cameras and bring cereal in here and watch it together. <laughs> well, I heard with the amount of episodes we've made so far, we can watch an episode of Turtles every day for six months oh. without a rerun. Woo! <laughs> That's what's Binge. Up. So the six month party, Sipes House. Yeah. All yeah. All I'll tweet my address later. Somebody tell, <laughs> somebody tell Seth Green we need Seth around here too. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we saw in this one the turtles are back. We had the, the outer space arc and they now have returned to New York with some time passed. And then last season they went to the farmhouse and then returned to New York. What do you enjoy from the production side about having the turtles go do something somewhere else in the arc but then always come back to New York? Well, I mean, that's home, you know, and that's kind of where the heart is. So you do these really big, crazy, you know, arcs. And then while we're making the arcs, actually, the crew and I physically, we feel like, oh, I miss New York. <laughs> no, like, we literally go, I miss, and what it says is, I miss home. So going home and having the characters kind of sit around, watch TV with Ice Cream Kitty, tell jokes, noogies, all that stuff, it's kind of nice. So it feels really good. Like, not to be running as fast as you can from mechanical shark monsters, <laughs> worried about oxygen, or, you know. It's, home is where the heart is, and uh, we're dying to come back home for so long. I know the fans were too, like, what's happening with Karai? Like, we missed everybody while we were out there. So, we're back, and they're there. We're dealing with it. Woo! It's cool to see that in this episode that we've seen some time has even passed some things that happened while the turtles are gone. But what do you think about the turtles makes them so unique that you can have them like at home eating pizza, fighting ninjas, or out in space, or, or even time traveling, and it still works for this for this group. They can kind of be in an any situation. Well, I was telling Sipes about this last like two nights ago that I don't see them even as turtles. Yeah. That like I'm so familiar with them that sometimes when I'm making the show, I look at their bodies, like, because I'll sit there and stare at it for so long that I go, oh my god, that thing has a shell on. Like, it's so weird, it's like my friend has a shell, and you go like, wait, they're green. Wait, I, so you just, I see them as Mikey, Raph, Donnie, they, they are these people that I, that I think we all have kind of associated with and have these strong personal bonds with, or we empathize with them, or sympathize with them at times. We see ourselves in them. So, it, they're the ultimate altruistic heroes to look up to. I think you can put them in any scenario, and they're always going to come out on top, and they're always going to be applicable. I just, I just think they work really well, just especially in genre. Like, I would love to see, I would love to do like a video movie special of like them in the Wild Wild West. It's as ridiculous as that sounds. Like, it would work with these guys. Would you want to see Wild West Turtles? Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I liken them to the Beatles. Yeah. Like, like there was these old Richard Lester movies like Help and stuff, and you just everyone loved the Beatles and they like oh, I like this guy because he's the smart one and I like him because he's got the weird face and I like him because he's the funny one. You know, so turtles. I'm Ringo. <laughs> Speaking of Beatles turtles, Rob Paulson, you have a shirt on under there. You gotta reveal this thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just forgive me as I <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta check this shirt out. Yeah! Well, the big picture, I think the turtles are bigger than the Beatles at this point. Globally. 
John, Paul, George, and Donnie. <laughs> well, they have a history of doing music, so. <laughs> but uh, we did. We went to space, though. We did see a lot of interesting new friends, new foes in space. But now you're back on New York. But will any characters from space ever somehow make their way yeah. into New York? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, you'll have to stay tuned, but yeah, there's some big things in space that might be coming to New York because they're missing something, yes. There you go. I don't want to... Thank you! A couple, a couple space... A couple, listen, if you guys watched all the space episodes, you know that the turtles really upset a lot of creatures while they're out there. Yeah. But they're not quite off the chain yet, so, yeah. I'm, I wish I could tell you so bad. No, no, no. <laughs> how about any love relationships? Do any of those make it back to her? Raphael, how about this? How about, let's address Raphael's new long-distance long relationship scenario. Here. <laughs> hey, the heart wants what the heart wants, man. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God for Skype. At least there's like, a, there's like a space love app now that you can use. You have to use your telephone bill. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that. Do, do you miss Mona oh. Lisa? Do you miss her? I do. I do, and every time, you know, yeah, I, I don't know what to say. When they kiss, it's just awesome. It's just awesome. Like, you know, badass rap, right? Come on, what's rap going to do? He's just, but when he's in love. <laughs> That's what I was wondering, because we saw you bond with Mona Lisa, and also bond with Chunky. Yeah. And I thought, does that bring, uh, I guess, Chunky with Chunky? Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, I was just gonna say, was that, that no, that's that's what the great thing is, you know, and, and I think it's a, similar to the New York to space thing. Like, if you were stuck in New York all the time, I think maybe the turtles they would kind of they would start to feel repetitive. But they go to space, and you don't know what you've got till you've lost it. And then they want to come home. So all of a sudden, and you're in New York, and instead of feeling like it's repetitive, you feel like, man, it's so good to be here, and it's a whole new world. For Raph, Raph is like he could become one-dimensional if he was just angry all the time. If there wasn't times when he really had moments of realization that he loves his brothers and he cares about them and he, and he appreciates them in their own way. You know, even Mikey, you know, he appreciates hey. them. Uh, but, but, then, so, but when there's things like spikes or, uh, Spike or Chompy or, or, uh, or his, 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 the, the love of his season four, uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a chance to be able to take that anger thing and make it even more interesting. Because then when he goes back to being angry, and there's a reason for it that everybody is understands and is in agreement with. So, you know, for me, just at the monitor with the thing or the microphone, just getting to read those lines, pretty, pretty awesome. It's great. You do a great job, folks. Showing the angry side and soft side. <laughs> his friends, not mess with his friends. <laughs> it was good for you, Sam. Speaking of love, uh, Greg, <laughs> couldn't help in this episode that Mikey had a little bit of a crush on Shinny, but if I remember correctly, you also got a girl that travels through time, Renette. Yeah. What's up, dude? Like, <laughs> That's why they call him any part in the storm, Mikey. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, why, Mikey why do falls in love every day. <laughs> why do you think Mikey life. has that connection with Shinny? Why, why do you feel that? I mean, she's hot. Oh she got some mad ninja skills and an interesting they, personality. Yeah. yeah, she's got a great personality. Yeah, we talked about turtle power, but this episode was about girl power. Yeah, hello. Yeah. 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 Uh, That's the real yeah. stuff. Uh, I'm like, yeah, turtles, great. Yeah, hello. Can you believe the strength of these ladies? And yeah. Gwendolyn, May, and Kelly now, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I'm not gonna stop. It's not the first time. Not yeah. the last time. And I love that Sarah and, and Brandon brought, I mean, I mean, April, you do such an awesome job on this show. Oh, you're so awesome. Yeah. 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 Um, by the way, that was all motion capture. We literally were fighting that. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we're just like rolling around in the studio. Um, so, no, it was just such a pleasure to be able to to play these strong women who were unique, not just like this, the typical anything. So, you know, to introduce a sort of, you know, magical Harlequin sort of cool character was, was really rad. And, and, and Kelly, who, and Kelly, who, who, um, who's 
gorgeous and amazing as a human being and, and has been like my idol forever, like has been so uh, amazing. She's um, on location so she couldn't be here. Um, but it was just such a joy to do that. That shot of like the three of us, I was like, that's, that's hot right there. <laughs> you know, we're so lucky to be able to be on a show where uh, the characters just, um, like Sean was saying, they grow and they change and they learn and they go through things and you know, watching April's kind of journey with them and sort of having these insecurities and you guys having, like, her eye having issues with Shredder and her father and all these things. It's, yeah. the, the issues are all so complex and I feel like they're all really relatable. Um, so you can always kind of relate with uh, one of the situations, one of the struggles. Sometimes the biggest struggles are not the big, exciting fight scenes. It's like what's going on inside of them. And so I think it's we're really lucky we get to be on a cartoon show that's filled with badass action, but also badass life learning lessons. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, man, and I love that you said that because, you know, I grew up in Singapore and I was like a big dork, like glasses, braces. Like I wore the Dwayne Wayne, like sunglasses. Like, I Literally, yes, and I hit puberty like today. <laughs> so I I used to watch like General Hospital and Nickelodeon, like Double Dare and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Like I swear that's what I used to watch. I was like, I could get splat. Oh my god, come on. Back. And you know, um, that's how I learned my English. <laughs> but um, it, it was just, it, it, you know, when you're a lonely kid trying to fit in and you're watching this stuff, I hate to say it, you know, what's going on in the world sometimes, like, you know, we're still artists and we're writing from the heart. And, and I mean, I'm not, I didn't write this, I'm sorry. We're acting from the heart. So, you know, Ciro and, and these creators and Kevin, who, 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 who you know, sort of bor born, how do you say born? Birthed. Birth, thank you. Birth, the, I'm still learning, I'm still learning. ESL, I'm almost there. So, the birth, the birth of the project. It really is about, I think, being able to identify and and feel some hope and some happiness. I know that sounds super cheesy, but that's why I watch. So it's a huge honor to be part of this class. Well, May, you kind of touched on this a little bit already, but that's one of the things I noticed about this. As much as we're seeing the turtles grow, we're seeing a lot of growth with April. We're seeing her psychic powers, we're seeing uh, the way that she's become a part, and now she's a Kuwich as an equal fighter with the turtles. Have you enjoyed playing this character, seeing that She's not just this human ally or this person to be rescued, but that has this nice transition throughout the series to become a strong character people fight alongside the turtles. Yeah, I mean, so much, her growth throughout these years has just been exponential. You know, she, she started out as sort of this human ally, like you said, and then she's really found all these amazing powers within herself to use, and she's been focused, and I think one cool thing is like about the show is how amazing they work together as a team and how they all really need each other. They couldn't do what they have to do without every single member of the team. Um, and I think it's, it's amazing to watch April kind of have gone through some insecurities and not be sure who she is or what she can contribute. And then she's like now really coming into this strong, sensitive, intuitive. I mean, it's so cool to have her superpower being mindful and ha having it be powerful intuition and being sensitive and paying attention because I think that's something we all need to do and Amen. strength in that. Yeah. You know, that's where real strength comes from is being sensitive and being aware and listening to your intuition and stuff. So I think it's really amazing that that's kind of become her strong powerhouse and I'm like so honored to play this character and I love how funny and smart and and strong she is, and I love that she's really found a home with you know these boys, and now I'm just so jazzed that I get to go out and kick ass with the rest of the team. Yes. Yes. And Rob, I'm sure Donnie is very proud of April as well. Oh yeah, are you kidding me? Donnie! Maybe. Not the fact that April is, is younger than most of my shoes. <laughs> A little disconcerting. Yeah. The turtles live a long time. Um, no, it's great. I mean, I, and I was—I say this in a lot of interviews, and today was no exception. One of the things that I really love about the, uh, you know, the, the sort of April Tello love story, and then the, the fact that Josh comes in with the Casey love triangle is—is is, is it really exposed a, a whole another level or a group of folks to the turtles? And it brought a, um, this sort of forbidden love into the thing and, and, and a love triangle and all that. It, it's great because all it did was advance the integrity of the story and another layer. And it's, it's always, there's always this really sweet little tension. You know, we saw it there, a very brief moment where April kisses Donnie and he turns and he hearts. 
And let me tell you something. When May kisses you, you stay kissed. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but I think it's a um, No, it is, it is really, really wonderful to have that element. And uh, it shows, to me, uh, uh, an, another aspect of, at least on a television. Now, we're talking about, you know, Raph and, and Mike with respect to their, you know, uh, crushes and falling in love and all that. And it does. It's just another progression of the sort of, um, um, to use this actor hacking term, but it's true, it's an organic progression for something that teenagers deal with. And it's really cool and it adds a whole other level to the story. And they're totally the OTP, right? Yeah. That means one true pairing, right? That's right. Somebody just told me the whole TMNT wedding thing. TMNT, like OTP. Dressed in green TMNT. veils. Yeah. TP, TMNT. Coming soon to the Toys R Us near <laughs> And uh, being someone who uh, grew up working with computers, Computer science. I have to say, for all, on behalf of all the tech geeks out there, yeah. we appreciate that Intel show on that side Woo! as well. We've been doing all the nerdy and tech stuff out there. Oh, it's great. It's always and awesome the, the, the geeks are inherent in the earth. It's, <laughs> it's supposed to be, I think. Yeah. Yeah. You, you see the, a lot of the, the, the paragraphs of dialogue that are tech speak. And you look at it on the page and you look over and say, okay, how's he going to do this? And they do you, do you, yeah, you, you guys come up with words that mean nothing, or do you, you like that? This is going to be, uh, uh, oh, the circumlocutive nature of the uh, bipolar divisional properties of the proprietary. I, th I, think, I think Brian is pretty thorough about that stuff. I think it's all real. It's all yeah, real. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Stroke reading. It's great stuff. And you, you can see, you know, it's not just them looking through the glass, the engineer kind of glass at us with the microphones. We can see back through them. And you can see when Donnie's do, uh, doing the tech speak, Brandon's like this. <laughs> Pretty close. <laughs> Bad for an old guy. Now, another character we've been seeing evolve is Tiger Claw. Oh, yeah. He's moving up the ranks second in command. He just got a job promotion. Yeah. I've been waiting patiently. <laughs> but I, I met you, you know, Eric, you're a really good, cool dude. So, what, what happens? What, <laughs> what changes in you to become so bad when you're Tiger Claw? Yeah, what happened? I don't know. <laughs> but when I find out, I will tell you. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I think generally we're all good people, but when you have a chance to play a villain like that, it's just like, ugh. Oh. And they keep piling them on. There's the, the Fulci twins, the, the two gangster guys. And then the Hammer. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Bowser, Bowser plays a lot of villains for us. They're the Fulci twins, yeah. right? Yeah. He's yeah, the Tiger Claw. They're two Joe Pesci's. <laughs> anytime, anytime we have a need for Italian Mafia... Okay. You think me? We go right back to <laughs> You think of the kid from Up. That's, that's who you want to play. The two Italian Mafia guys. It's Russell from Up. All I'm just missing a, an old white man and some balloons. That's it. And as Eric says, all that from a Filipino-Canadian. Yeah. Very rare. How about that? Like I said, you all do a wonderful job on this show. So Thanks, buddy. Really thank you for everything you guys do. And once again, Gwendolyn, we're so glad to have you as part. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Yeah. And they slide through Kudo Beach. So yeah. that's our graduation yeah, party. We're Kudo Beach, so we can't wait to see you kick some more butt on this. Dude, I'm just getting started. <laughs> it's going to get insane. Kudo Beach and every day, that's what happens. And Gwendolyn, I hope you're having a great time. I hope you're enjoying working with these guys. I hope you're having a great time on the show. These guys? Yeah, oh, yeah. It's a good <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, no. No, no yeah, I, I think the first time I walked in, I stared at Sean Austin from the back of his head, and I was like, it's moments where you do take a moment and you go, this is pretty rad. Like, I came from, I'm, I just started, I'm just, I had no nepotism, I was just, you know, geeky, nerdy chick from Singapore, and now I'm like looking out at a thousand faces of turtle mania. <laughs> well, we got some more awesome stuff to show you guys. Sir, I think you've got a couple of uh, cool concert art things you want to show us. Let's see what we got. Everybody, big round of applause! Cameron Eastman! 
turtle papa in the house. You guys made my car payments for 30 years. <laughs> I want to be Cyril Neely when I grow up. Oh. I want to be Ice Cream Kitty. <laughs> I've been bragging about being uh, the co-creator of the Turtles. Let's give it up for Peter Laird, by the way. Yeah. My bragging rights go to these these days too. Uh, I get to voice ice cream kitty. Yeah. Yes, yes. I, I get to join the ranks of these awesome people, <laughs> and these are the people that actually. Yeah, they get you guys mixed up. I just want to say again, uh, thank you guys so much for all your support for the show. I love this show. This Nickelodeon show, this, you know, I jump for joy every Sunday when I get to see it on, especially the new episodes. I was so thrilled to see the new episode that's coming out uh, next month. Um, and we really appreciate your support, and I love this man. He brings this thing to life, and uh, such a joy, such a treat, such great stories. And when I write turtle stories these days, um, I think of this voice talent, and that's what I think of. That's, they help me bring it to life, so that's what I think. Thank you. Lucky this, uh, this last year with the awesome uh, Megan Casey and a bunch of the talent at um, uh, Nickelodeon invited us to spin out one of our own turtle stories, uh, one of our own turtle tales. Come up with something a little different, a little offbeat, maybe something you hadn't seen before. And I think you guys saw Jonah yesterday. Did some of you guys see that? Yeah. It was crazy. I loved it. Um, but I got to do one. I worked with the incredible Paul Jenkins, a longtime friend of mine. We uh, co-wrote, co-directed that, and uh, it's called Pizza Friday. We get to have a lot of fun again. Our own little spin on it, I hope you like it. Um, it was really a treat that, you know, um, we didn't want to follow in the footsteps of what these guys are already doing so well. So again, we took it in another direction. But I want to give a quick shout out to uh, my wife, Courtney uh, Eastman. Um, <laughs> she she uh, dared to step into the footsteps, uh, follow in the footsteps of like me, and she voiced uh, April in this little short. So I appreciate that. So and follow carefully behind the people. Um, the other one, Brandon Allman, um, who has done so many fantastic things in all the Turtle episodes for so many years now. Um, he wrote one, and unfortunately he can't be with us today, but his is called uh, The Turtles Take Time and Space. Um, and he wanted to give a special shout out to Ria Kuga, who was uh, the driving force for really helping bring that to life. Also, uh, he booked to Mr. Sipes and <laughs> voicing his and uh, Eric Bowser for um, with that, I guess you know, want to get into the shorts. You guys want to see two shorts? Yeah. Woo! Right here, right here. Thank, you. thank you so much. I love you guys. We're going to be doing a signing today, so you can come see all of us anyway. Yeah, you guys are going to come to the signing, yeah? How about that? Booyah Kasha! Booyah Kasha! You can check out those shorts later on Nick.com. And as for that episode, City Award that you saw, did you enjoy that episode? Yeah! Well, you can see that again when Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles returns to Nickelodeon on Sunday, August 14th at 11 a.m. Ninja Turtles will be back this episode and with the episode. I want to give a big round of applause to our fabulous panel here. Thank you guys. I think we have one more special guest, Greg. You want to share a special guest here? Yo, dude. <laughs> Ask this guy some questions.